Since the launch of AMD's AM5 platform, one of the most recurring questions we've been getting in our comment section is about cooler compatibility. So what I wanted to do today is address some of those things for people who already have a cooling solution that wanna know if what they've already got will fit without having to purchase anything else and what the story actually is with AM5. We did something quite similar when Intel's 12th gen launched with LGA 1700. So we wanted to do the same thing to help you out with AM5. for demonstration purposes only. We're not covering every single cooler on earth because obviously the video would just go forever. We're looking at some really common mounting solutions so you can get an idea of what will and what will not work because a lot of these coolers share similar mounting solutions. So it makes more sense to do it that way. A lot of the stuff that I'm talking about in this video is not in relation to the stack height of the IHS and the socket. They're actually quite close between AM4 and AM5, so that doesn't really play a huge factor into the compatibility between sockets. This video is also not going to talk about thermals because for the purpose of this video, we're talking about cooler compatibility only. When AMD announced AM5, they said that all AM4 coolers would work on AM5, but as you're about to see, that's not the case. Now, there are a few really important things to mention with this video. There is a certain rule with compatibility that I've noticed between AM4 and AM5 compatibility. The main rule here is if your cooler comes with its own backplate for AM4, then it's not going to work with AM5. This means coolers like Cooler Master's super popular Hyper 212 with its AM4 mounting solution will not work. The only exception here is if your cooler manufacturer has made an AM5 cooler mounting adapter kit. If your cooler doesn't have a backplate and it uses the backplate of the AM4 socket and it relies on that backplate for the AM4 socket, then it's probably going to work with AM5. And what I found is that's the case in every single occasion. So let's actually take a look at the AM5 mounting solution. This is the AM5 socket. And one of the first things you're probably noticing is it retains the same plastic clips that we saw on AMD's AM4 socket, which means coolers that use the stock mounting clips that mount to the socket for AM4 will work with AM5 without any type of adapting and no type of modification whatsoever it should work right out of the gate. The way these coolers typically work is if we take a look at those plastic clips, they hook onto each end of this mounting system. And basically it is a pressure mounted system with the hooks, with bolts usually being tightened to pull it closer to the IHS of the CPU. If we flip these boards over, you'll notice that the back plate is now permanently attached you cannot remove it here. You can see that now there's actually eight screw holes as opposed to four. The inner screw holes here, these are actually bolts that come from the top that hold the whole retention system down. So the backplate actually pulls the retention system to the socket itself. And then you'll notice that the outer screws are the same thread pitch as the original AM4 backplate as well. This means that anything that can physically screw into that, which has the same offset as AM4, should also work with AM5. This is mostly good news for people who, let's say you are using a lower end chip and you've got something like a stock AM4 cooler that you wanna do some testing with, or you've got something like a Wraith Prism, which is actually quite a decent CPU cooler, you can mount it quite easily. You'll also see that the hole spacing and everything between AM4 and AM5 is exactly the same here. The main difference being that the backplate doesn't fall away from the motherboard at all, and it actually retains the same height as a properly attached AM4 backplate to have that cooler compatibility. So it is nice that AMD has retained this whole mounting solution so most coolers are in fact compatible. With saying all that, there are about three types of cooler mounting solutions that should work regardless of the manufacturer. Most manufacturers will use the same or something similar 
but this will give you a guide to show you what to look out for specifically. What we're looking at here is the Acertec mounting solution for AM4. And as you can see, it clips on to the bottom of a liquid cooler. And this is typically for liquid cooler based installations. As you can see here, it actually uses bolts that screw into the top of the socket. So you'll actually need to remove the stock mounting solution for the AM5 socket, much like you had to do with AM4 as well. And you screw those bolts into the holes that I'm showing right here. As a bit of a demonstration, this is what it looks like without the cooler mounted to this bracket. So you can see how it actually lines up with the socket itself. And it just uses thumb nuts, yes, yes, they're called thumb nuts, to fasten those brackets to the top of the socket itself. If we take a look at this from another angle, you can see that once again, you lower it down onto those bolts and you fasten them accordingly. This is a very easy mounting solution and Acertec coolers are typically what I use when I build for build videos, mainly for time purposes, because even if you're installing a cooler like this, on your AM5 motherboard, you don't actually need to remove the motherboard from your case because it is that easy. You can also see that the cold plate makes more than adequate contact with the IHS of an AM5 CPU as well. So a lot of conflicting things from people saying you need a new bracket or a new mounting solution for AM5 and these Acertec coolers, but the truth is you don't actually need anything different. The next type of mounting system you'll find is something that you'll see on some air coolers and some liquid coolers. We've got a Cooler Master cooler here, which uses this clip and retention system that hooks onto the top of this factory mounting setup. Now, as mentioned, it uses these plastic clips and the way this works is the cooler then hooks onto each side of the cooler retention system. I'm gonna show you how this works. The plastic hooks hook into the metal parts of these brackets here and it pulls the cooler down onto the top of the IHS of the CPU. I quickly mount this up just to give you guys a bit of an indication of what it looks like while it's mounted. And you can see here that the brackets do bend. That is actually to help with mounting pressure. So if you're seeing this at a weird angle like you're seeing here, there is nothing wrong with it. And at closer inspection, you can see that it does in fact hook into that mounting solution. It is quite a rudimentary system, but it does work quite well. So if you're using a Cooler Master liquid cooler, if your AIM4 mounting solution looks like this, which it probably will, then this will work out of the box without any issues. And there are lots of other liquid coolers that use this mounting solution as well. So you can use this as a bit of a guide. Finally, we'll take a look at an air cooling solution. This is what is typical of scythe coolers and Noctua coolers. Basically, it'll mount to the stock back plate with a bunch of supplied screws and some brackets here. And they are some big plastic standoffs that lift these up from the board to give the adequate height for adequate mounting pressure. And they mount to those center holes here with the cooler itself screwing into those holes, which means the actual cooler doesn't need to be modified. It would be the bracket if anything needed to be changed. However, because coolers like this use the stock AMD backplate, you won't need to change anything if you're using a cooler like this. And as mentioned, Noctua coolers and Scythe coolers and many, many air coolers use a system like this. So basically what it is is the bracket mounts to the socket itself and then the cooler mounts to those brackets. And as you can see from this shot here, there is more than adequate mounting pressure here. And I didn't even screw it in all the way. Remember, this video is for demonstration purposes only to show you the fitment. There is no issue with actually screwing this up all the way. It's just as a bit of a demonstration. And there you have it, ladies and gents. Most of the cooler mounting solutions for AM4 that you currently have will work. The exception being anything that has its own backplate will not work. All right, I hope this helped you guys a little bit with figuring out if your cooler is compatible with AM5. And as we saw in this video, with the Acertec mounting solution, most of that is going to be compatible if it's Gen 5 Plus and onwards. So you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. We're saying all of that, as mentioned, if your cooler has a backplate, it's probably not going to work. 
because the retention system for the socket itself is mounted to the back plate, unlike AIM-4, which doesn't have a retention system, except when you drop a PGA chip into the socket and you lock the socket, that holds the CPU into place. Whereas with LGA sockets, it actually uses that retention system, which is the main difference here. Now, I hope you guys found this useful, and if you did find it useful, let us know in the comment section right down there, down below. And that's just about gonna do it, ladies and gents. If you like videos like this, make sure you do yourself the big old favor of hitting that subscribe button. Give us a like if you like this stuff as well. And that's gonna do it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seeking. I like making these videos because not only does it help you guys now, it could possibly help you in like three years time, right? And that's what I'm here for. Thanks for watching.